This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Well, it's about that time, isn't it? Yeah, it's the time when uh, we all get together here for a thing called the Ramble, which includes, among other things, our Citizens Panel, which will be with us in about 25 minutes from right now. We go until midnight. Yes, till the cock crows. Or my cock crows, I don't know. And uh, meanwhile, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's a guest, like we have a guest almost every day now because we have some of our old comedy friends dropping by. I wonder, wonder who's there. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we, how do we put it? Lighten up, everyone. <laughs> the old Bob Rubin has yeah. arrived. That's how we say it. You did it correctly. Lighten up, everybody. And I guess in nowadays we need to lighten up more than ever. Uh, yeah, apparently. Apparently. But uh, uh, first of all, before we get going any further, so how did your uh, TV taping going? Go, go, go. There. Well, it went great. It, did, it really did. The crowd really was, was phenomenal. Uh, as a matter of fact, the crowd was so phenomenal that uh, the first part of the show, or you know, when I come out and do that, and I, you know, I, li- I like to start every show by saying that, you know, lighten up everybody, the old rubes here, and you know, uh, this this a um, lot of people haven't seen me yet, and uh, so hopefully, when we uh, get the project out on some of these platforms, uh, you know, a lot a lot of new, I'll get a lot of new fans. But the funny thing was, so at the beginning of this one. They were yelling Rube so hard that it sounded like I was being booed. So we had to cut that first part out. <laughs> Couldn't even use it, you know. Uh, but uh, they were an awesome crowd, and uh, they were laughing at everything. And, and so the taping went great. The editing looks great. Uh, we're finishing that up uh, next week. Actually, Friday... Uh, in, in a couple of days, no, in one more day, we're going to shoot a uh, a sketch to put on at the end, and then uh, that's going to be put in, and then Sound Mixer will take over, and it should be ready. I'd say probably in about ten days, it'll be ready. Oh wow, that's that's a fast turnaround. The, the thing is, though, when he, they say Rube Rube, and it, it was always the case, you always tr- had to say to people, they're not booing me; they're saying Rube. You know. Right. Right. Uh, you probably should have just left that in and then put a lower third that says, note, they're saying Rube, not boo, or something you like that. You can still do that. You can still do that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that would be that would play pretty well because then it would, it, you know, the, your, your huzzahs at the beginning, the, the reception you receive suddenly takes on a whole new feeling, you know. That's true. I'll, uh, I'll uh, bring that up to the editor. That's a good point. Yeah. So where where are they editing it in San Francisco? No, down here. Oh, really? Oh, so it was all done out of a crew from L.A. No, it was done with a crew from. Uh, it was done with a crew from uh, Berkeley, a Studio B Films, and they yeah. brought in these killer cameras. And uh, I was told that like each camera cost like fifteen thousand, top of the line stuff. And yeah, that's it's about what they cost. Today. I mean, you can spend. Fifty thousand, seventy-five thousand on a camera, but you're not oh, doing yeah. a mo- you're not doing a movie, okay? So yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, so the, the everything looks really good. And uh, Studio B films, and then uh, I've got an editor over in Burbank, and uh, right now, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna uh, see this stuff again tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm going to look into uh, <laughs> putting in a note, keeping that first part in. And just putting a lower third that says, "Yeah, notice to all or something like that. They're yelling, Rube, not boo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. Because that's always been a great thing about you is when you went out on stage, light up everybody, the old Rube's here, and then they go, Rube, Rube, Rube. Uh, you know, uh, there's that sense of excitement. Yeah, yeah and that's if, true. If you cut that out, it kind of you know. So, uh, ha- do you have any prospects on where this thing is going to be uh, tried? You're going to try and sell it to? 
Well, I got Gas Station TV. They're interested in it. What's Gas Station TV? You know those little TVs at the gas station? Yeah. There you go. Uh. <laughs> you know, America loves their cars. So a lot of people see me. Yeah, I, I think they're changing their name to Gas Flicks. Gas Flicks, yeah. <laughs> Cinegas. Cine, Cinegas, exactly. And I also have Coinstar interested in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Those are the machines that count change. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. You could maybe, maybe get a play on those ATM machines that everybody goes to. Yeah, I'd like to do that. And uh, yeah. where else? But how do you where do you, where do you push this from here from here? I want to well I want to go to Netflix first. Yeah, I want to go there first. That's where I want it to be. And uh, I'm just tell, I'm just thinking real positive about that. The project from the inception to execution has gone really well, you know. And uh, so I'm like, well, might as well keep thinking big and go on Netflix. Maybe Pat and Oswald will help out with that. Um, you never know, uh, but. I talked to a dude that uh, had had tried to play some movie over at Netflix, and he he said they they will watch the whole thing when you give it to them and make a decision. So I uh, probably have to find an agent to rep this for me. I'm not going to do it myself. Yeah, you, 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 well, you, you, there are people who can get in the doors. That's what an agent's all about. He can walk in the door. You can't. No, I can't. So uh, I'm going to try to get uh, because you look like a vagrant. You know, and uh, that that doesn't play well at those big agencies where they're, you know. No, it it, it doesn't. (laughs) Man, I don't don't like, I never liked walking into those buildings, man. I got nauseous and creepy feelings and just like, oh, my God. The most unpleasant business I've ever had to do was in Hollywood. Hell, yeah, man. You know, and it was one of these kind of things. I was, was actually with Playboy. And they had, they were open, they were starting the Playboy channel. And uh, they said, uh, we hear you, you know, I came down from San Francisco, and they said, we hear you did Midnight Blue in New York, and we'd like to know if you have any ideas, and blah, 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 blah. And I am this guy from, I think, maybe Video West was the group at the time, uh-huh. went down there to hold the, to go to this meeting, and we went down with a whole bunch of ideas. We had a main idea, and then we had other ideas we could pitch at them. Right, right. And, and the guy says, as we walk into the room, he says, hi, good to meet you, and everything, he says, Nobody leaves this room till we've got a deal. Wow. Hey, pretty good, huh? Yeah, I mean, that's encouraging. You're not wasting your time. Nobody leaves this room unless, until we make a deal. By the end of the meeting, we didn't have a deal. (laughs) Oh, man. It's brutal, man. And every idea we'd throw at them, they would take it, and then they would change it and say, what they were basically saying was, can you come back in a couple of weeks with this idea, and then we'll buy it? Wow. You know, in other words, it was leave the room, come back with their idea, and then they'll have you do it. Yeah, and there's nothing strange. If you know, if anybody knows Hollywood, which uh, anybody listening knows anything about the, you know show business, that story right there is is, is uh, as ridiculous as it sounds. It absolutely it, true. It's perfectly yeah. believable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and that's the way these guys were. You know, I mean, uh, 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 and that I, every time I ever had to do any kind of business in Hollywood, it was it was bad. It was just bad news. There was this uh, there was this comedy radio uh, network that they started called I don't know comedy network or something i can't remember what it was called yeah. they spent a lot of money it was a lot of money that was invested in this thing and they brought me down because they wanted to see how they could bring me into the fold because i was you know in san francisco i was the king of comedy i was the guy who you, i was the go-to guy for comedy and i i knew how to do comedy radio better than just about anybody right and so they bring me down you know and we go through this whole thing and they show me around and they meet with me and they talk with me and it all looks like it could happen. It doesn't happen. Just nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And I was the go-to guy to do. They had Bobby Slayton working for them. They had all kinds of people. It was a big failure, by the way, in the end. It just it just tanked amazingly. Yeah, I never heard of it. Yeah. 
Uh, but uh, no, they had taken out an old, an old warehouse that was used as a Fox studio. Yeah, and and changed it into this into this place where they did all these radio shows. It was, it was a lot of money put into this thing, but somehow I don't know somebody absconded with some of the money or whatever, and it all it all tanked really fast. Well, you know, uh, my my pitch stories are legends uh, down here because uh, I used to do the craziest stuff when I'd go to an actual pitch meeting. You know, uh, pitch meeting. Let's explain this to people because we use terms that you and I know, and they don't know what we're talking about. A pitch meeting is when you go in and pitch your show. Right. When exactly. you go in, and there are a bunch of people who know less than you do, who are now going to judge upon your material. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing. Uh, what? <laughs> here's one real quick one that was was, was funny because I didn't have anything goofy planned. I'll tell you some of the goofy ones, but this one was funny. Uh, I go in uh, uh, to pitch my uh, children's show, uh, Verve Town or Adventures in Verve Town, and uh, it's a Sony Sony Television. And um, well, explain I, Verve. Explain Verve Town. I mean, you, you. This was a project that you had worked on. I think Roseanne was working on it with you, wasn't she? Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, all Verve Town is uh, Adventures in Verve Town is a children's show that's got it's got everything in it in mixed media. It's got uh, live action characters and uh, like myself and uh, uh, Spurs Jubilee and um, the Wisdom Wrangler and uh, the woman who's in charge of the petting and strumming zoo. I can't think of her name right now. <laughs> the petting and strumming zoo. Yeah, the petting and strumming zoo. And then, uh, you know, then there were puppets. There was a brightly colored pile of leaves that was a puppet, and that was his name, brightly colored pile of leaves. And then there was Flippy Tommy, the tie-dyed sock puppet from the 60s. Mm-hmm. And then and then at the petting and strumming zoo, you had a uh, 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 a pandolin, a violin, an upright goat, things like that. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a funny show, man. And um, uh, and then, oh, and then animated characters, like uh, the mayor with the mighty tiny hat is the mayor of Verve Town. And, um, <clears throat> I, oh, uh, uh, shiny shiny blue opera singing donkeys. That's how everybody got around in town, by riding, riding on these opera singing donkeys. And, uh, hey, wait a minute, this sounds good. I'm going to get another pitch meeting. <laughs> uh, no, it really sounds... Like you know, sounds like a fun show, and this is not because I like you. This is this was the this was the essence of a lot of the humor that you had to begin with. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and it, it is a fun show, and I, I had a, a a great pilot script written out. I had a great uh, uh, character description list, plus I had uh, ten more ideas written out in just a paragraph each. You know, and. Uh, 10 more storylines. And so, I mean, I had a really tight package and, uh, uh, women, <laughs> women have said that about me, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tight that's, package. That's the pitch meeting. Everyone's heard of. Yes. Right. But anyway, so, so, no, no, no this is one. I'm making this story. Way and, am, 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 am I right again? Roseanne was involved with this in some level, wasn't she? Yeah. Initially she was, yeah, for, uh, we had a three year deal. And uh, and this meeting might have come after the three years lapsed, uh, where I took took over total control of the show. And uh, but uh, yeah, she was in it as uh, she was the uh, a ballroom uh, dancer, and she had her own dance hall. And her name was Miss Serotonin. <laughs> and uh, uh, um, and Lori Metcalf was in the uh, original. We did a, a what do you call it? A, what do you call those short? Like a, a three minute piece. It's called a pitch video, I guess. Yeah. And Lori Metcalf was in that. She played Spurs Jubilee, the entertainment receptionist to the West, and uh, and the and the uh, uh, entertainment receptionist at Verve Town. She'd be the she wanted to show everybody around if you're new in town, mm-hmm. and um, she did a great job. And uh, but anyhow, no. Oh, I did. I go into a meeting, and uh, there's um. It's at Sony Television, and the guy goes, he goes, oh, Verve Town, huh? Adventures in Verve Town, oh. And he goes, let me ask you something. What's with all this whiz pop? And I said, whiz pop? Did you say whiz pop? And he goes, yeah. 
I go, oh, okay, that's what I thought. And I walked out and never came back. Well, what was whiz pop? Fuck if I know. That's what I'm saying. I walked out and I never came back. This was, you know, I, I just had it. I, I just had it with these meetings. But let me tell you. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says to you, what is with all this whiz pop? I've yeah. never in my life, I've been in show business a heck a long time, right? I know. I, I, know. I, I have, ne- and so have you actually at this point. At this point, I have yeah. never heard the term whiz pop. And oh, I've never I, had or I never have since. And have you ever asked anybody what it means? Well, uh, nobody knows. People just say the same, they react the same way you just did. And this was at Sony. This was not at some little dippy, little half assed oh. company. No, this was Sony Television. And, uh, you know, uh, no, no, another day where I was very hopeful, you know, because I'm like, because it wasn't some rinky dink little operation. And right. I'm like, yeah, man, I said, you know, it's a children's show. This is. This is not, you know, the Bob Rubin uh, comedy special or anything like that. This is a, or the Bob, you know, the Bob Rubin show. This is a Adventures in Burftown. And, uh, 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 yeah. I just can't believe I, he said whiz pop. And I'm like, oh, man. In my head, I'm going, all right, this meeting is going to go bad. It already did. It just started. It just started and already went bad. Because basically, I think what he was going to do, and I think this is what Wiz Pop is, he didn't get it, and he's trying to fucking put, rather than just say, I don't get it, he's he's, he's, he's showing why he's better than me, and what he would do, uh, rather than use all this Wiz Pop. And it's like a, 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 a negative connotation to whimsical. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, crazy, just crazy. And then uh, uh, it's funny. Here, here's the problem that I have. And then we we'll, we can continue with the story about Verve Town. But the, yeah. is that as a performer, and you're a performer in my own way. I'm a performer. You're meeting up with people who have absolutely no talent, none, but they have complete control over your future. Right. And, That's what makes show business so scary. Yeah. I mean, if I ran Sony Pictures, for instance, Sony Television, I would only hire people who had already been in the business, you know, who knew what it was all about, who could see something interesting and not simply be somebody who's trying to keep every day that he's alive saving his job. Right. But, you know, and and the thing is, uh, but the funny thing is, you don't have the makeup. You have the makeup uh, as a performer, and I have the makeup as a performer. Because I said that, too. I said, hey, I wish I ran so-and-so or whatever. And then I realized, well, if I ran so-and-so, I'd have to be a completely different person than I am now. And, and maybe I'd be an asshole, too. <laughs> you know? Well, you, you know, you were talking about Netflix earlier. Netflix seems to be running a company pretty well that way. In other words, they're open to interesting and different ideas. They're not closed-minded that way oh i hope you're right because um i just want a shot that's all i want to know that somebody look at the whole special and uh maybe they'll take their problem over there is they're up to their ass in comedians now they bought up every comedian they can lay their hands on uh so that hbo doesn't have them you know they got amy schumer and they got you know dave Chappelle, and they're paying them in fortunes now i mean you come in with something like this They'll, they may, there's a good chance they may run it because I see that they do run a lot of stuff that comes from outside sources. As right. to whether you're going to make a lot of money with it, that I can't tell you. You know, they probably will be willing to take it if you're willing to take very little money on it. But that's right. not the reason you did it. The reason no. you did it was to get yourself out there. Yeah, to get myself out there again, try to build build a following again. You know. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, but but uh, certainly Netflix has been very wise. I mean, in many ways, they are now surpassing HBO. For instance, as an example, they have about the same amount of subscribers as HBO now in America. Wow. And uh, they can, be at uh, what what are they charging now, Nine ninety nine a month? At nine ninety nine a month, they can... And by the way, a little more, something like eleven ninety nine, if you want the four K version of of uh, of uh, yeah. Netflix. 
uh, their their income is incredible. I started to think, I was wondering, how are they buying all these movies and stuff like that, some of which are good, some of which aren't. Yeah. But how are they doing all these Netflix originals? Not all of them are Netflix originals. They actually come from somewhere else, and they put on Netflix original. Uh, but they're investing money in stuff like crazy, and I'm going, how can they afford it? And then I found out these guys are, I think... Did I see a figure of something like four or five billion dollars a year is their income? Whoa! So they've got the money; they can put out money forever on films, and stuff. so they can really—they're now competing with HBO very strongly. And HBO, I think, is feeling the squeeze. Yeah, and, and Netflix uh, with that kind of money, eh, you know, they can buy up everything. And um, like you said. Uh, I think I think right now is a good time to go to Netflix. I think it's because I'll have a chance of getting it on, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it for the money. I mean, so making some money would be nice, but I did it to uh, yeah to get in front of a lot of eyes. You know, a lot of get in front of a lot of people again. So you I know? think I think your chances might be good. They'll take it. I don't know if your chances are good that they're going to be willing to pay you know big bucks for it. Yeah, they're not they're not going to pay me big bucks, but um uh. I just want to get it on there, man. That'd be cool. Yeah. Also, uh, I mean, if you don't get it on on Netflix, uh, although who who did, uh, uh, Rob Schneider, I think got a show on Netflix, yeah, a while back, which he gave them, uh, and they took it. You know, I mean, they're 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 open to new stuff, but yeah. they're not necessarily open to paying the big bucks unless you got a big name. Right, right. You know, Absolutely. and if you sell this and all of a sudden they see, see, they with what they get at that um, Netflix big advantage over HBO and over a lot of these other companies is because they're on the Internet, they know exactly how many people have watched something. Yeah, yeah. And those are figures, by the way, they won't give out, but they know exactly how much, you know, so they know when somebody uh, is going to... Uh, uh, do well or not do well or has done well and now we need to, to make a deal with them so if you suddenly a lot of people started watching your thing and they saw some good numbers they're absolute numbers and they, they're willing to negotiate based on those numbers yeah that's kind of cool man they, you know? they started out with house of cards and their attitude was here's what we have we have netflix we run movies let's look at what people watch okay and then let's go after stuff that will be compatible with what our people seem to like watching, the type of movies, the type of themes, and so on. And actually, the fact that they have these, these really huge statistics available to them as to who watches what, when, where, and how, they've been able to make some very savvy decisions. You know, so... And they, but they've got, but there are other competitors out there. You could, if that doesn't work, go to Amazon. You could go to Hulu. Uh, yep. You could go to any. You you, you could th try to throw the thing over at HBO, although they're a little snobby. Uh, you might try Showtime. I mean, there they, it used to be that you only had like one chance. You went to HBO, and if they didn't want you, that was it. You right. Know? right. Now everybody's doing original material. So, and plus, back, your back, your back. act your act, and I assume the show that you did is completely clean. Uh, I, I said I, I cussed once. Okay, so that could be bleeped out. If you suddenly wanted to sell it to, say, Comedy Central, which would be the last people you'd try it with. Yeah. You know, but they'd probably take it because they just want material, you know. Uh, but but all you'd have to do is bleep out one word. But your your stuff is pretty well, you know, family-friendly. No, it's pretty much just a cooking show. It, it's a cooking show with a big guy with a big head. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's what it is now. Yeah, but one time I I, uh, I went to Comedy Central to pitch uh, Adventures in Burf Town. Yeah, and I got my friend uh, 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 Elena Fabri. I got her to dress up uh, in a business like fashion, and I got another friend of mine to dress up in all black with wraparound sunglasses. And I gave him the silver, uh, one of those silver briefcases. Uh, yeah. There's a name for those that type of briefcase. I can't remember it, but yeah. Anyhow, Hal, uh, Hal Burton. Is that what it's called? They like metal. They look like metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I. Uh, the funny thing was, I told 
here's what happens. When you go into a meeting, yeah, you're always meeting with some guy that doesn't know what he's talking about and their assistant. And their assistant always has a yellow legal pad where they're scribbling down everything before you've even opened your mouth. And in your head, you keep thinking, why are they scribbling? Because nothing much has been said, but this person looks like they're off to the races writing a novel, and you just figure it's more trickery to intimidate Yeah, yeah exactly. So I told Eleanor that, and I said, listen, as soon as we get in there, start writing everything. <laughs> everything. And um, and uh, so uh, she came in there, and, uh, and th- then I said... Uh, and I said before we and my my uh, my uh, bodyguard, so to speak, was looking intimidating. And I said, and everybody's looking at him like, "Who's this guy?" And I go, "Oh, that's Mr. Summers, Mr. Summers, the dogs." And I go, "That's Mr. Summers. Mr. Summers always brings the dogs. Mr. Summers, the dogs." <laughs> Puts the briefcase on the table and goes click click, opens it up. And I got a Nathan's hot dog for everybody in the room. At that point, we got to stop right now because we've run out of time. Oh, no. Yeah, but okay, we, we'll, we, we, we'll continue it next week. That gives them some reason to listen. Okay. That sounds good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the old Rube is back. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Yeah, this is talk radio like you've never heard it before, and you probably won't hear it like this ever again. Why? Because it isn't catching on. I don't know why. <laughs> Just leave me alone. Anyway, it's time for us to uh, uh, do something we do each and every night, and that's go to our citizens panel. And let me explain the citizens panel to you. Let me turn up my microphone just a little bit. If you listen closely, I think maybe you can hear the air conditioner because we are in air conditioning time now. Today, it suddenly became hot. Okay? And, uh, eh, well, you know, uh, that's, that's the way it goes. Okay? So, I've got, if you hear a little bit of a hum in the background, it's air conditioning and uh, big deal. Okay? Now, we're waiting for people to call. And what happens is we have, you can call using Skype. Go to Skype.com, download the program. They ask you like four simple little questions. Doesn't cost you a penny. Doesn't cost you a penny to use. And then you just call us and um, we'll talk with you. Either that or you can, you can actually go on the phone. And again, I'm, I'm such an idiot. I, you know, I have a certain lack of an ability to remember numbers in order. It's sort of a form of dyslexia. But our number, we have a phone number, 347-352-0079, 347-352-0079. You can call us doing that. Uh, the only problem is, is it's not as much fun as being able to see the other people who are talking and for them to see you. So anyway, uh, am I on? Yeah, I'm on. I'm just waiting for the first person to, uh, uh, to uh, call me. Usually I sit here moaning and bitching about nobody calling at this point in the show, and then by the end of the show we have what we call a full house, which is nine people plus me. And um, But um, I'm waiting for the first caller, uh, and they win a lovely prize, and that lovely prize is getting to talk to me without having to put up with anybody else. And you know what? Here's the problem now why they all wait, okay? Because notoriously the first person who calls gets in just fine and then when the next person calls uh they kind of either their their camera goes off or they something happens and they've got to recall in so now nobody's calling at the beginning they don't want to be the first one but please somebody be willing to be the first one okay otherwise i could sit here for the next couple of hours without any callers because everybody doesn't want to be the first one on the line and let's see if we can also beat that curse. You know what I should do, probably, at some point here, is I should go to the new Skype, which causes a little more problems in getting people on the air, but it might not cause that problem, all right? But I see that Phil Meyer has come online, so Phil will probably be the first one, and then he can be the first one to have to call back in. But uh, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting, okay? I'm sitting, I'm waiting. 
and I'm uh, just ad-libbing like crazy. I don't want to get into any topics because if I get into some topics, well, there's Phil, okay? Uh, so now everybody else can call because Phil's uh, uh, thing will get screwed up, right, Phil? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just the uh, sacrificial lamb. There was Tony. Uh, there's Tony Magno. Uh, okay, now you, you're frozen there for a second, Phil. Are you there, Tony? Oh, now you're okay, oh, yeah, Phil. Uh, let's see you're if right? Tony comes in. Let's, there's Tony, and you're okay yeah. too, Phil. Oh, okay. We, we, broke, we broke the curse. Yeah. We absolutely uh, the broke Bennett curse. the Bennett curse. The Bennett curse. No, the Skype curse. Uh, so now the rest of you can call in and not have to be the first. That's my newest thing. Nobody calls immediately because they don't want to be the first one. Yeah, you, you heard about the two ladies sitting in the pool. One's wearing this really big diamond. Yeah. So the woman says, hey, that's, that's a beautiful diamond. She says, it's got a curse. He says, she says, really? What's the curse? Her name's Plotnik. She says, well, the curse is Mr. Plotnik. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> um, um, so can you hear my air conditioner? Not really. I just turned mine. I can't hear yours. No. No, you can't hear it? Good. No. Okay. I turned my uh, Yeah. It, it's hot today. Yeah, it was hot in work. Got up to like 95 or something like that. And you don't have any air conditioning where you work, right? No. I, I, about you you truly, o'clock. you truly, Tony. Oh, wait a minute. i got to put you guys on here. I, oh. uh, why am I doing the video if I don't uh, put the, uh, the, uh, the panel on? There they are. We'll break the camera. Terrible. Yeah. Nice. Jeez. I like torture myself. Sometimes, I sometimes I just forget. You know, there's so much to do here between the audio and the video and all of that that I forget. Hey, everybody wants to see who's talking. Anyway, uh, you literally work in a sweatshop, don't you? Yeah, Tony? actually, you want to. You're gonna laugh at this too. All the summer merchandise is on the second floor. My uncle's so fucking stupid. So now, when it's 90 degrees out, heat rises. But you know, what do I know? <laughs> so Alex, by three o'clock. I was so fucking tired because it was so, you got to go upstairs and we got to actually literally. Well, walk you know what I would do is, is I would, if I were you, I would complain to HR. I should. <laughs> You're going to play to myself. It's like, I might talk to you. It's hot. Three o'clock. I wanted to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but why would you put the summer stuff upstairs? It's so stupid. Well, because half the year it's winter. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's true. But you would think it's so. Oh, God. I, I. I don't even know why I do it, but I guess I do. It's they, right. It's warmer. It's warmer in the summer. He got the straw hats where it's ninety degrees in winter. Yeah, it's stupid. Really, it's fucking so dumb. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, 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 but don't they have any kind of air conditioning? Oh, don't we have uh, we have exhaust fans, but when we put them on, they just blow the hot air around. Yeah, but I mean, you, you need you need some kind of. I would go to OSHA. I would go to some For federal sure, say. federal organization and complain about the working conditions i, was just, I had this vest <laughs> from yeah, 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 wait, 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 hold on a second phil wants to say something yes phil i had this vest for motorcycle riding and what you used to do is you took it and you dipped it in a bucket of ice and then uh, you put it on and it kept your core very cool hmm. uh, and it would keep you cool for hours well i have an actual it didn't cold drip any though. water Hmm? That you can put around my neck, like you know that coldy thing. It's like a cold rag. You, you, well, it's neck cold, it's right? the same as a rag. You put a wet rag around. Yeah, you. put a wet rag, like you snap it. Also, you, also, you, really you might you might go into the into the bathroom, and if there's if the if your water is cold enough, just put it on your pulse. Oh, really? Here, this this area here. Let me show everybody what I'm talking about here. It wasn't. And oh, and okay. uh, uh, that that will that will cool you down a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't horrible today because it got, it, you know, it was okay. It got hot in the afternoon. It was wearing on you a little bit. Yeah. You know, but getting a little cranky then at 4 o'clock. I want to go home. Getting a little cranky? <laughs> it's like, let's get the fuck out of here. I talk to myself. I listen to the radio all day. Yeah. Actually, I put on the news and I keep thinking about what you're thinking about. Alex, Trump's in hot water. Trump. Look, look, look at Phil. He's a bitch. Phil's going, nah, he's not in hot water. I, I, don't, no. I don't think he's going to last. Yeah. Wait. How long is he going to Hey, Tony, if you keep working in that hot house, you're not going to last. But, you I know. Not. I actually lose some weight, though, going up and down. I'm in good shape. I'm going up and down the stairs all day. I'm not really tired. I just want to go home. All right. Phil's getting, Phil, you got to be getting worried about Trump. 
No, you know, he says there's yeah. nothing uh, nothing to worry oh, about. Oh, oh, really? Because he says there's oh, nothing to worry about? Not You're not nothing. worrying about him? Okay, fine. Good. I'm good. glad. You know, the guy you appoint, uh, the guy that got appointed as a special prosecutor for the FBI, Yeah. Uh, he's out of San Francisco, and he's actually a pretty good guy, Mueller. Uh, and I, I think he's a straight shooter, and I think, uh, you know, uh, you may end up with one or two ways. One yeah. way is Trump is embarrassed and uh, has has problems, and it's going to uh, give him uh, problems for a while. The other way is he comes out smelling like a rose and uh, much stronger than he ever was. And that that there's a possibility. I mean, it's a 50-50 shot. I don't think it's right. a 50-50 shot. I think the fact that there is a special prosecutor that's been put in place is, is indictment enough to kind of uh, make yeah. him look bad. Okay, come on. He's only, you know... When had we celebrated 100 days, how many days yes. ago? And already we've got a special prosecutor going yeah. after his administration. I, 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 you know, he's trying to keep everybody happy. Uh, oh, yeah, and, he's keeping me really happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'm not ready to indict him uh, based on the fact that somebody's looking into some accusations. You know, you can be accused. This is America. You know, I, I don't think that this is the way it should run. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you accuse somebody, you're innocent until proven guilty, I unless I don't like it. Well, aren't you a little alarmed that uh, at the dinner with Comey, that he kept, Comey was smart too, well, he's the head of the FBI, so he can't be an idiot. He kept a diary of all the conversations. That's what they all do. But Phil, he asked him to drop the investigation. Oh, uh, no, he says, I hope... Uh, let me see. I wrote it down. So it's, you can, you can, he, I, I, I hope this doesn't go anywhere or something uh, uh, to that, that effect. That's what Trump said he said. Yeah, well. Okay, uh, that's not necessarily what he said, and we got to hear from Comey. Yeah, uh, I saw something from Comey, but I don't know if it's false news or not that, uh, oh, uh, that you know, they never asked him to uh, drop any investigation. But, hey, we'll see. You know, uh, Would you not have a little alarm that he had dinner with him? You know what they, I was reading, Alex, in the New York Times said? It's unheard of for the president to have a formal meeting like that. Comey was, uh, was it, it sounds like, usually the head of the FBI and the president don't sit down and have supper together. Well, well you they, know, the, he, the Republicans were yelling about the fact that Bill Clinton uh, met with, what's her name, who was the... Uh, yeah, uh, Loretta uh, Swift Loretta there. Loretta Swift, Swift yeah. on an airplane where they talked about their kids and a few other things and not about politics at all. But that, oh, he probably was trying to get in good with her to get Hillary's uh, off the hook and so on. This is far worse. Yeah. Well, I hope that he comes out unscathed and appoints a special prosecutor or gets a special prosecutor appointed to look into Hillary and what she did. Oh, back yeah, you want to know something? You want to know something? Uh, that ain't even coming. Okay, but yeah, sure. but th that being the case, uh, he gets bad enough. No, he uh, what he, he'll you know it's bad. Hi, Rob. Ro Robbie, lock him up. Lock yeah, him he, up. I lock, lock him, him up. up. I'm waiting yeah, for the right. tape to come out. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for that. Tape. No, but the 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 um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, it's it's. It, 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 oh, I forgot what I was going to say. We're talking about Hillary, I think. Yeah, about Hillary. And that, um, uh, boy, oh yeah, that we, we're going to know that the whole situation isn't going well for Trump if he fires Mueller. Oh, yeah. he, can do that. He, he can fire Mueller. Yeah. He could, but I don't think no, he will. No, he can. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think he will. I think, well, well, you didn't think he'd get rid of Comey, did you? Uh, well, he says that he planned on getting rid of Comey anyway. So. But did you hear his reason why? Well, he no, no. Us. Wait a minute. His reason why changed every day. Oh, it changed again. Kind of like uh, Benghazi and the YouTube video. What YouTube yeah. video? Oh, that's why uh, Hillary said that uh, that the uh, Benghazi uprising took place because of uh, a YouTube video. No, or no, 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 no. You're so like wrong, it. Phil. You're so cartoon. Right. No, no, yes. no, no, no. No. Getting flustered. It you was a. It was a movie. Up. Movie that somebody cartoon. Somebody then put on YouTube, but it was a movie. It wasn't a cartoon. All right, it was a so movie. I, I violated the cartoon. A very badly dusts. made movie, as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
Say, Here's another critic. And, you since, know. and no, and since there were a lot of people in that part of the world who were protesting it, our first assumption was that it was as a result of the film. We later found out that wasn't the case, and we, you know, they recanted. That that well, there's, the there's some tolerance issues. Uh, you know, in Burlington, Vermont, I read today that there was a restaurant that was advertising uh, bacon uh, in their sandwiches. And, uh, all, and there's a, a big population of uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, people in that, in that area of Burlington. Hmm. So they started a... Uh, uh, a By the way, on, I go to Burlington every summer. Yeah, and uh, I've yet to see a Muslim. Well, okay, but that, go ahead. But you're cloistered. Go ahead. But uh, you know, so anyway, this article said that there was a lot of protests, and the guy who uh, had the uh, uh, the restaurant uh, took the sign down that he had had advertising the thing because uh, the the Muslim women that were protesting didn't want them to advertise that they had bacon. Uh, they felt that it was an insult to them. And uh, so this is another First Amendment thing. And, and this is what happens when the population starts growing. Uh, and this is the warning that I saw on a video called the Islamization of the World. All because of bacon? Uh, <laughs> Wait, I'm confused, Alex. I did the Yeah. Are you serious? Well, Are they only pig or no? I, I really don't think that story you read is true. Okay. Yeah. Because it, because uh, normally if somebody uh, somebody's Jewish they could complain yeah. about it but they wouldn't they just wouldn't go there and have the bacon yeah. sandwich okay right. yeah you know and I don't think Muslims are going to sit around and <laughs> and go crazy because some guy is advertising that he has a sandwich with bacon be well, if the population <laughs> population gets big enough they want Sharia law. Uh, they yeah who are we listening to these days are we still listening to that phony fuck on on the internet Alex uh, Jones that's no, you mean you sound he's like Alex, Alex, you know, sound like awesome. Alex Jones was I'll have to find it. it it was one of those things that popped up somewhere in uh, one of those articles is anybody else gonna call let's uh, let's let's uh, all gang bang Phil here yeah hi Ooh. hi Rob how you feeling good good doing well yeah um, uh, I found out today that I had no blood in my urine. You had no blood in your urine? Yes. So, I have blood in my urine. I know, that's why I mentioned it. I, oh, I, thank I you. I up on you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I have a, my uh, follow-up doctor's appointment, and they called me today and said that all was clear. So I wish I didn't, because I'm so sick of having to tell doctors, don't worry about it, it's been there for the last 15 years. <laughs> the only time I didn't have it is when I went to see a urologist and he tested me. Probably and for some it. reason, that was the first time in 15 years I hadn't had blood in my urine. Yeah. He probably missed it. Yeah, something like that. He wishes he probably missed it. No, I, I've read that some people have really? a small amount of blood in their urine. It comes from either the kidneys or anywhere in the whole tract, you know. Yeah. But I'm, you know, it, it hasn't killed me yet, so... I'm, no. just, I'm just worried about what will because I'm, you know, I have this great fear of death. And it, it, as, as John Cleese said it to me, the grave is ever yawning. Okay. And, uh, and you know, I mean, uh, I mean, maybe I'll live to be 100 like my mother, but I doubt it. You know. I just want to have all my marbles. I don't care if I get old as long as you I don't have them now. Well, I mean, oh no! I want to be completely. I want to be, I, I want to be completely people. without any sense of where I am when I die. Yeah, no, I don't yeah, want, I want to be completely that. comatose. Yeah. Well, I'll be right back. Uh, oh, oh, oh and, yeah. and this time for these commercials. Uh, I'll be right back. Come back. No. Yeah, uh, maybe we're not going to get a lot of callers tonight. This is interesting. I saw Kevin come on, so I, I wonder where he is. And uh, um, well, anyway, Jeff. I you out there, Jeff? Did you have you mentioned Roger Ailes? Well, I was about oh, I was yeah. I was going to get to that. I was going to. And that. Alex, there's a documentary on him on Netflix. I didn't watch it yet. I, you might be interested in. It. Why? Oh, I thought you maybe liked the uh, like Roger Ailes. I thought you found him interesting. Why? I don't know. I don't give a shit no? about Roger okay. Ailes. No, I put on my site tonight that we're going to do our more in the death of Roger Ailes on this show. <laughs> 
Did you see all the people, all the women crying this morning on Fox? <laughs> no. They played a clip. Well, I, I watched on CNN a clip of uh, when they announced it. All the women were saying, he gave me my start. And, and, and they were all just like, you know, yeah. all just all broken up about it. Yeah. You think the company told him cry? No. No. But wasn't this the guy who was up for how many sexual assaults? Oh, I don't know. 8,000. Yeah, 8, yeah. And they were all crying. That's kind of funny. No, you yeah. got, the way you got a job at Fox you is, you, okay. is you blew Roger Ailes. <laughs> you know? I mean, it was it was a simple thing. And, um, you know, that's why Bill O'Reilly was the way he was, because the boss was that way. That's what And people right. like to be, you know, will use their boss as their, as their guiding light for how they behave themselves. So. Yeah. They could have saved themselves $40 million if he just let them die first. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, he didn't die. He didn't die uh, from uh, being a fat fuck. Uh, no. He died uh, from being a fat fuck that slipped on something in his bathroom, hit his head on the, on the counter, yeah. and uh, got a yeah. brain hemorrhage. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So oh, I didn't he'd, still be, he'd still be alive with us today if uh, he had just been a couple of inches away from that bar yeah, of soap. Bar of soap. He slipped on a bar of soap. Yeah, but he should have took a bat. He should have took a tummy. He'd be living right now. <laughs> if he was still working at Fox. He'd be living probably because it yeah. happened in his home in Florida. Yeah, he, or, no, you're that's right. a way to yeah. go. Imagine going like that. But you know, the thing is that, that it, I maybe part of it was subconsciously a desire to not live any longer you know nah, he's got 40 million no, no, uh, no, no, eggs no, money you know you know something phil that's how little you know about the business i'm in uh i mean the fact is that the money is not as important as with him the power the power was far more important than the money yeah. and he didn't have the power anymore wasn't he going to build another network no uh, I thought he was talking to One America. Uh, no. And a, a bunch of those guys are, including um, uh, O'Reilly. They're, they're all kind of rumors and things like that. But he, look, he was getting to a point in his life where there wasn't another, you know, tower to topple, you know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, people can start a, a news network without Roger Ailes. It's not like he has some magic wand and knows exactly what to do. He already did it, and all you have to do is look at what he did and do what he did. You know? Yeah, or Trump could have brought him in uh, instead of Bannon. Uh, he probably would have been better off. Well, there's not room enough for two big, fat people in the Oval Office at the same time. Yeah, well, Bannon, I, I have a feeling Bannon's on his way out. Yeah, well, that'll lighten the room a little, but you still got Trump, who's just getting so fat now. He looks he, terrible. He looks terrible. He does, he does look terrible. But you know what? I'm kind of glad he looks terrible. Really. Didn't he have an extra piece of that chocolate cake? It's yeah, well, chocolate he's talking cake. about how that wonderful that chocolate him. cake was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess Can you better. imagine they find a tape on him? What? Can you imagine they find a lot of dirt on him? Somebody just flips Trump. Uh, well, you just you're just hoping. Look, if if, if, he, if he was a businessman, he was a unscrupulous businessman. He was uh, a very uh, very much into the New York way of doing business, okay? Uh, so there's lots of stuff you can probably find on him if you went digging, but I don't think any of it would be terribly important, okay? It would be business stuff, yeah. okay? And maybe stuff that could have wound him up and had him wind up in jail. I'm sure there are several cases, situations, where he was close to going to the pokey uh, well. that, he, that he avoided. You guys may get your wish, though. Uh, I understand uh, the new. This is it a special prosecutor or or just uh, an investigator? Uh, yeah, it's, a it's a special prosecutor. Special prosecutor. I understand. Then he has the ability to get Trump's tax returns. That's right. Really? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I hope he does it. This don't, is, don't you, you want to see it, Phil? Nobody. Uh, nobody said that that would be made public, though. Uh, uh, well, if they find collusion, uh, then yeah. it'll probably be made public. Right. Hello, Brian. Hello. How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. Okay. Turn on your camera, then we'll be able to see that lovely podium of yours. Um, anyway, it is on, oh, right. and here comes Kevin. Now everybody, everybody's uh, joining in now. Might be spinning still. There must have been some some TV show that uh, was on tonight. 
Here comes Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Turn off your uh, audio. He did. Just give him a chance. Second. Phil's so bossy. You know. Yeah, he'd be tough to work for. He'd be picking me orders all day. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I'm I'm sorry to see uh, 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 Ailes die because uh, now who am I going to kick around? Yeah. You know? Oh, you can kick around Hannity. He, he, what? Sean Hannity. Yeah, he his guts. I hate him too. You hate Hannity's it? another guy I like to see them dig some up on. Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's stuff. Oh, oh, hey, American guess guy. a couple of people are here. Uh, here's here's Patrick, and Tim has just joined us as well. Hello, Patrick. Hello. How is, you got to tell us, because, you know, we God knows we've suffered many an evening here discussing Rob's gonads, okay? Wait, you got you to start the medical intro music now. Let's go. I, do I have medical intro music? I thought you, you want you to start some up. <laughs> came from Doctor Kildare or something. I, I don't know. I don't. I can't do that. That's dun, 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 dun. you know, that's not it's public domain. But anyway, pa, uh, uh, we had Rob. Uh, everybody seems to be having problems with that part of their body, <laughs> and and Patrick is no exception, right, Patrick? Well, Rob was my hero, believe me, because when I heard that last week when it started, yeah. <laughs> he was my hero when I heard they were going to have to squeeze it, and I'm like, oh, man. He's more of a man than I am. <laughs> and this the is, is going to squeeze it was pretty good looking. The two of them that were playing yeah. with it. Were yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, nice. Pretty right. pimple poppers. Yeah, but, you know, the great fear you have in that situation is that you'll get a hard on. No, you know. there's no shot in hell that that can happen. Yeah. Not when you're sitting there and that's going on. Not, not with what was going on there. No, <laughs> sorry. Right. It, it would be in a, you know in a porno. Yeah. At, you know. at some point, did Nurse Judy say, uh, "Let me lick it and see if it tastes okay"? Yeah. See now, there's a <laughs> no. If I can, if I can taste the infection, <laughs> suck it out like a like a yeah, like a snake, snake bite. bite. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, but anyway, Patrick, you're looking That's very healthy, Patrick, you by the way. You look you look terrific. Uh, so I guess, you know, they got, they got all the kidney stones and all of that out of you. Yeah. But now, and everybody can go like, you know, go, go turn us off for a while here as he describes what his problem has been for the last week. But I want to know. Well, I mean, it, it, it started in the operating room where they had to intubate me four different ways. Now, what does that mean? Uh, for them to be able to keep me breathing while I was under anesthesia, mm -hmm. they did four different ways to try it. I was awake for the whole, every one of them, because I had to help them through it. Oh, my Lord. So, and I'm your hero? <laughs> and yeah, really, no shit. It wasn't bad. I mean, it, it was uncomfortable, but it wasn't terrible. And then they finally resorted to the one that worked the last time. I think they just wanted to see if something would work better. So, yeah. Um, let's tell everybody you had the kidney stones, and you were also a paraplegic, so the bottom half of your body doesn't have any uh, feeling in it. And hey, Patrick, so, how big were your stones? Well, wait a minute. Let me finish. I'm describing this to the audience, Phil. Uh -huh. Uh, and uh, we, uh, it was, um, uh, oh boy, now I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Phil. You were telling him uh, he's paraplegic and uh, he doesn't yeah, feel anything from yeah, the bottom. Yeah, it, yeah, and so that when you have something like kidney stones, he has to use a catheter in order to urinate, and you can't get the stones to go through a catheter, so you have to remove the stones. Have I got this right, Patrick? Correct. Yeah. But then when you started writing me about the problems we were having afterwards, people were asking me, well, how's he doing? And I said, I really can't tell you because I don't understand it completely. If you would have just read the one um, uh, message I sent. There was something about a leaking catheter. No, it wasn't a leaking catheter. What, what happened was um, the morning that I removed my... Um, uh, <laughs> The bag that I had mm -hmm. um, with the catheter that was inside of me, yeah, um, it became kind of a problem. Now, let's see if anybody can see this. What is that? 
Is that the bag? Wait a minute. Let me let me let me blow up the picture here for the people uh, who are watching. Catholic. There you go. The, what it, now? What is that you're showing us? Okay, but I'm trying to get it clear. Yeah, it's, it's clear. It's clear enough. Okay, the white part of the bag. Yeah. The yellow part is what goes inside of you. Yeah. And then on the bag, there's a there's a thin, bluish uh, line. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's the stent that goes inside the kidney. Inside the kidney. Yes. So, inside of me was about six inches of that blue thing. Mm -hmm. And about two inches of that was in my kidney. So that's what was bouncing around in my bladder along with the yellow thing, which is the actual catheter. So okay. So that, I got to remove that by myself, Yeah. which I've done before. It's no big deal. You deflate the balloon that's in there and it's done. The problem is, with all that stuff sitting in your bladder, yeah. um, it irritates the bladder. So then your bladder starts spasming. So what I had been dealing with Monday and Tuesday and part of yesterday was my bladder reacclimating itself to having nothing in there. So it would every time it would spasm, I would piss. And it didn't matter how little was in there or how much. Oh, I yeah, uh, okay. I can, I can okay. I, I can get the the drift of this. So Yeah, so I was on piss patrol literally for 48 hours where every half hour I either made it to the bathroom or I was cleaning the floor. Well, don't don't think of oh. that as something terrible because Phil has the same problem and it's just his prostate. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, now... By the way, Brian, wait a minute, hold on a second. Brian, turn on your camera, would you? It is on. I yeah. Do it again. Do it again. I'll try and uh, see what happens. Yeah. Patrick, did you have to use a catheter every yeah, yeah, time yeah. you had a pee or was it peeing without the catheter? It was peeing without the catheter. That's why I said... If I was lucky, I could make it to the bathroom in, a, in that time and get the catheter in. But more often than not, it was just pissing into a towel that I had on my lap. Now, wait a minute. So what about there, a there is, friend? So there is pee that can come through the penis. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I, okay. I, if I never used the catheter, I could wear Depends all the time if I wanted to and not use the catheter. I see. Okay. But, but but you just have no you just have no control over it. You right. can't say I have to pee now and then pee, right? The catheter gives me the ability to be as normal as I was before, where I determine when I'm going to go to the bathroom. Yeah. However, if I'm my bladder is too full, it doesn't matter. It's going to come whether. I get a catheter in it or not. So yeah, you know, yeah. I'm stuck in traffic, Patrick. I got this thing. Uh, it's it's a bottle. Uh, it looks like what they use in the hospital. And if I'm stuck in traffic and really, you know, it's coming out my ears, uh, I'll pull over and use the bottle. Yeah, ever you since I got on the prostate medicine, I've never had a problem with holding my bladder until I got home. Well, exactly. it's better. Is it's that better bottle you use, us, Bill? Because well, I, I don't always use Coke. Yeah. I use Gatorade, but what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I, but I, you have something more precise. By the way, this program tonight is yeah. rated yellow. Yeah. Uh, I got something I used the Gatorade bottle for dollars. Yeah. And uh, it's got a handle, it's got the right curve, and uh, it's got a top. And I use a mountain yeah, drugstore. What'd you say, Patrick? I use a Mountain Dew bottle. Uh, only, well, here's the reason. How do you and tell the difference between the pee and the Mountain Dew, though? That's, that's the problem. Exactly, no, that, is, that is exactly the fucking reason, because if I'm ever somewhere, even if I get out of a store and, you know, I'm driving somewhere and all of a sudden I feel my bladder and I know I'm either going to piss my pants, right. I'll pull over in a lot somewhere right. and pee in the bottle and then that way... If a cop would ever come by, they, they'd they never be able to tell the difference with, you know, if somebody said, well, he was doing something in the car. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it's a medical <laughs> thing. Yeah. You know. Like, like Dumber and Dumber. Cop can take tasted. a taste like that. Oh, yeah, uh, I mean, dumb and dumber. Yeah, dumber and Dumber. He drank out of your mouth. 
But anyway, you, anyway. I imagine a cop would want to taste it to make sure there's no alcohol in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's his problem. Let the pig vomit. Well, that's what I read. So, yeah, and the answer filled earlier question, it was, the biggest one was six millimeters. That's pretty big. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're just a stone producing devil, aren't you? <laughs> that sounds like rough. Well, at least. So, that, that, that. So, it was two rounds of surgery, one that got canceled, and then finally the one that went last week. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, I'm but glad you're feeling stone. better, and, you know, our thoughts were with you. I, 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 and I don't mean that in any kind of, like, treacly way. I mean it truthfully, that, you know. Appreciate it. And uh, I would, uh, look, I, my, my thoughts were with Rob, too, when he said he was going in for say, surgery on Monday. I thought you, Alex, are going to say not in any religious way. Uh, not in any religious way. say my prayers. For, you know. well, listen, I even worry about kids who have to be circumcised. So, you know, it's a, it's a problem all the way around. How you doing, uh, Tim? Real good. Yeah? I've been having back problems if we're talking about medical, but i, I got a tailbone that has a bad death so oh boy. I've been pretty much limited to that. It feels like somebody put a rope in my thigh and pulled it back and forth and gave me a rope burn in the middle of my thigh. Oh. I'm sure it's, it's pretty yeah, minor the, compared We should start, to a, new, start a new show called Can You Top This? You know, yeah. and, and everybody phones up with their particular ailment. I have a loose tooth. Do you know? Have I told you about my loose tooth? Again? Uh, yeah, it's loose. But, uh, it, one of these days it's going to have to come get I be pulled out. I've heard you got a loose screw, but I didn't know you had a no, loose tooth. No, the, the loose screw was what Rob had. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, uh, Tim, uh, Roger Ailes. Tim? Uh, I, I'm more concerned about pants. But about uh, who? Pants. Why pants? He filed to, uh, he put the, he filed to have a pack of his own yesterday. To have a what of his own? Uh, political Action Committee. Oh, I see. Because as if he's going to run for president. He won't have to run. <laughs> well, he, he can invoke the 25th Amendment, too. Oh, yeah? I think I think he's the puppet master. Uh, nah. But, uh, I, you know, I'd be just as happy well, with Pence. Well, my, Trump, I, I would be very happy. I would say he's the puppet be, master so much as he's one of the string pullers. I would be very happy uh, if we could uh, have Kirkland as president. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's his first name again? It's uh, Osco Kirkland. No, Kirkland. Oh, uh, it, it, because really, as I watched that show every week, and they ran the last show last two nights ago or last night, um, uh, he really is the perfect president. How, I agree. How about Lieberman? Uh, Wait a minute. You're, possibly... you're changing the topic. Well, okay. Well, I'm not familiar with the TV show. Well, and you should watch it. It's a very yes. good TV show. Hello, Scott. Is that that one with Kiefer Suff? Not yeah, yeah Kiefer yes. Sutherland. Yeah, yes. right. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Patrick. I actually like uh, Jed Bartlett a little bit more. Really? <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll take I'll take uh, Kirkman. That's but fine. but isn't it isn't it kind of a, uh, isn't it kind of um, uh, saying something about that show that that uh, uh, is it name name is Kirkman uh, is such a such a really great guy you know he's he's the ideal president he's wi uh, he's the president we all wish we had hi Scott Plano Plano <laughs> Plano are you at home Did you hear it yeah I heard it I had to go it's... back actually because I missed it so I had to go back. And it's just, I'm, they just throw it out there, you know. Well, we got yeah. a phone call from here, we got a phone call from there, and then there's a phone call, this guy is in Plano, Texas. For a number of years now, though, Alex, I've always thought it was rather alarming and indeed scary that we turn to these, I don't want to say false idols, but uh, fictitious characters as uh, ideal avatars for these powerful positions in which... In which uh, make the well, real, yeah. but I I, I, I will argue with you on this one, Brian, because it seems to me as though the writers of that show are trying to create the antithesis to Donald Trump in well, Kirk in that. Kirkman. 
Uh, I don't doubt you. I, I don't know that that's the case, though, because wouldn't you think those would have been written way, like, a long time you ago? Know, I don't know, you know, you'd be surprised how little ago they are written. I used to think, for instance, when I watched 24, that they wrote the whole season out. But they didn't. They they were maybe uh, two episodes ahead on writing on is that, on that show. Is that Nick Nolte show still playing? Where he's uh, like the uh, 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 a Reagan character or a Bush character who who sees his error of his ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that it's, it'll probably come back. You know, I enjoy. They probably it. have an outline for the whole season, but they. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that I I I don't know that. Uh, I mean, like last a couple of weeks ago, they were, they, the, the whole episode was about them trying to get uh, um, a program through so kids could keep learning music in schools, you know. And it seemed to be speaking to something that Trump was trying to get rid of, which is art in the schools and art and you know. Oh, it's not a new advent to have entertainment well, venues parallel and. Yeah, but what they've what they've created in Kirk is it, it. is it Kirkman Rob or is it Kirkland Kirkman right? Kirk, it's Kirkman. Yeah. Uh, in President Kirkman is the ideal president, the one we wish we all had. I got the one I wish I had. What? Yeah. I got the one I wish I had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the only yeah. one That's in this whole group who, who feels You're comfortable right. with what you just said. The only one who feels comfortable oh with God. it is you, Phil. That's true. Me and 49 million other people. I, you know, I just, I can't believe you're so stupid that you one. really believe the shit that comes out of your Torches mouth. And, okay? You know, if, if, I know uh, you to be more intelligent than that. If, if they end up Trump, will you eat your words? It, what did what, what, what you say? If they end up clearing Trump and saying that he had nothing to do with this uh, Russian collusion or, any, uh, or uh, uh, things with the campaign, and it comes out that he's clean, uh, would you then start throwing your support? No, and I'll tell you why. Scott, you want to say why? What about obstruction to uh, the ob obstruction of uh, justice there when well, he tries to cleared. tell Comey uh, to let it all go? All I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is that the cleared. reason the reason I would not necessarily is because the guy at the top is the most protected of anybody. Because yeah. several other people have to fall before Just that like guy can fall. Yes, yeah. much like business. I mean, where, yeah. you, where if you're if, deniability, if, you if you're a fifth True. vice yeah. president, uh, you get fired after, uh, and then the next guy above you has to get rid of five uh, uh, fifth vice presidents before he gets turned. Over. And so by the time you get to the top, that person is insulated for a certain amount of time from uh, from being thrown out of the company. Yes, well, Patrick. Experiment. Hey, Reagan got Wait away with it, didn't he? Yeah, P Patrick. What, a, what obstruction of justice by getting rid of Comey? He has the right to get rid of him. He's the president, and everybody no, serves that, that, as the president. Uh, no, they, they think but he doesn't have the right to tell him to let it go, though, does he? Yeah, but he has the right to tell the, the uh, head of the FBI to not investigate anymore? He no, didn't say that. Not. Obstruction of justice, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, here Think it about is. it. Here's he the, says, "I hope." Uh, can I? Uh, I hope you can let this go. I hope. Oh my God! I yeah, hope. That, that's yeah. what he yeah. says. He said, <sighs> and 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 you're also reading words off of a page, and you don't know what preceded it, and you don't know what kind of yeah. tone that was being. Uh, I, you know, I, the, I wrote, the tone of the I conversation. Those, Rob, I wrote those down uh, when it was being reported. You could say, "Gee, I hope you find," or you can say, "I hope you." And that, how you say it. I've had the times when a boss brought me into his office and said, I hope you can let this go. Right. Yeah. And he wasn't, what he Other wasn't words, saying was, I hope you can let this go, that if I didn't let it go, I wasn't going to be around much longer. Right. Patrick. Absolutely. Patrick. I got five from eight people. I'm finding this whole thing almost hypocritical for the people that are glad, to, that are upset that. Comey's been let go. And here's why. For example, Maxine Waters was bitching up a storm when he was investigating Hillary, and she said something to the effect that he's not an effective person, he could never be effective, and now 
that he would fire, why would she want an ineffective person investigating something so important as what is going on? It just doesn't make any fucking sense that the Democrat who demonized the fuck out of this guy, all of a sudden, now they say that he's got some merit. I never liked him from day one. So I've been consistent. You can go back in your file. Oh, oh I'm look. I, I have no doubt yeah. about that. Yeah, that's what's uh, lacking. Uh, I agree. Patrick, Rob, was, Rob has his I, hand I, up. I, I, I I agree with you, Patrick. But where w the what you're missing, or from my perspective anyway, is not that he it's is not that Comey is gone. Is the circumstances around it? If you had a boss that was investigating you and you could turn or a person that was investigating you and you could turn around and fire that person that's what it, i think everybody's outraged about this guy's running an investigation and you fire too close. Him. Was too and, close. And you, got, you also got to keep in mind that he can still fire this guy they should have investigated comey and what he did on the hillary thing that's what they should have investigated here, here's the thing, Rob, and, I, and I, I know the circumstances seem odd, but if the Democrats have declared him ineffective in the past, they should embrace him no matter what the circumstances are of getting fired no. for this reason. No, for this reason, Rob, because then there's one more thing that this special prosecutor would be able to investigate. They can investigate the Russia thing. They can investigate the all the collusion shit, and they can investigate the circumstances of the firing. So True. they have three things. All of that's going to happen. Yeah. But right. the thing is, we, when they fired him, well, because when they fired him, we didn't know they were. Everybody was saying we don't need a special investigator. We don't need a special. Everybody was against the special investigators. So now you think they're just trying to quell this entire thing. And let's face it, he gave how many different excuses and reasons? Oh well, the memo was written. No, the memo was written the day after he signed. He said he the, uh, Rosenstein knew before he wrote the letter. I have All a point too. Yeah, the other thing I'll. I'll throughout the hypocrisy thing is for the Republicans that they should be embracing a special prosecutor because if that special prosecutor find nothing then the Republican can say see we told you there was nothing there to find uh, yes uh, Tony this is the one thing I agree with what Patrick's saying and I understand Rob's point of view but this is what I really don't get if you really break it down to the simplest terms, and this is why I think Trump is probably potentially guilty. If I was innocent, or if Alex was innocent and I was his lawyer, I'd say, Alex, did you do this? No. Investigate me. You're not going to find anything. It seems like Trump has something to hide. If you're an innocent man, would you do all this? Well, I think I think you make a good point, Tony. That, uh, point? that No, Trump. that, that he, he, uh, Trump protests too much. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he got rid of Comey because Comey was going after the Russian connection, and that was his major reason for doing it, seems to indicate that there, where there's, you know, where there's a, a fire, there's smoke, where, the, where there's smoke, there's fire, rather. And um, I think that uh, a lot of people are suspicious about that. Now, I want to say something quickly, Patrick, to you about, about people who hated Comey. I hated him along with everybody else. I thought that when he did what he did, it was at an inappropriate, inopportune time. And why he did it, he's never truly explained. You know? Uh, I think, you know, he maybe felt he was going to be damned if he did, damned if he didn't. Uh, and uh, so he was playing safe rather than sorry. But whatever it was, what he did was something that it, it made me very mad, made a lot of lefties really mad, made a lot of people who were for Hillary get really mad. And uh, it really bothered us that these people were, you know, uh, uh, were, were do that he was doing this thing at the time that he did it. And yes, we hated him for that. But he has that job for 10 years, and there's a reason why he has the job for 10 years. He has the job for 10 years because he has to be able to run that office 
without prejudice and without worry that, hey, if I make a mistake, I'm out of here. And the only person that can get rid of him is the president. Otherwise, he's got that job for 10 years. A lot of people, I think, are bothered by the fact that the sacrosanct, can't even speak any longer, nature of that, uh, of that rule of 10 years was just blown all to hell by Trump because the guy was getting too close, and he didn't like that. Yes, uh, hey, Phil. Hey, hey, Alex, I've got another point real quick. Okay, let Tim talk because I can't um, see. I, I, I hated him, too, but we found out after the uh, inauguration that he tried to release information about the Trump-Russia investigation, but the National Security Council voted him down. So he wanted to be fair to both sides. They yeah. wouldn't let him, so... That kind of takes away some of the hate, yeah. But right. it's just the, it's just the fact that if you're being investigated, I don't think that you should. There's, they should need a rule in there. If you're being investigated, you shouldn't be allowed to dismiss somebody and right. put your own person in there. Well, and you know, Lieber, Lieberman mm-hmm. is going to be the FBI director. He worked for the law firm that works for Trump. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody know that? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, Jimmy but, Doors covered that. Anyway, uh, yes, Phil, Phil, you you had your okay. hand. Okay, I, I I look at this Comey thing and say to myself, maybe Comey is culpable in some of these actions as well because of his mishandling of of the uh, email uh, issue with Hillary. So therefore. Comey is like having the fox guarding the hen house because he can't be totally uh, neutral uh, if, if in fact, he, is, he has got some culpability or uh, some other wrongdoing that would have surfaced. So I believe that Trump did the right thing by getting rid of Comey because this way he'll put somebody, you know, somebody in there fresh that will, that will do the right thing. Rob? I, I, uh, I rest um, very... I slept very well last night. Uh, we have a special prosecutor. I, I, everybody likes this guy. He's straight as an arrow. He's not going to be uh, intimidated by Trump or anybody. I rest comfortably, and I go back to Tony Schwartz, the guy who wrote the book with Trump, and his words about who this guy Trump is. And he's a flawed individual with a flawed character, and you're going to get what you get with a guy like this, and he's going to self-destruct. He is going to self-destruct because he doesn't know any other way. Even today in the press conference with the Colombian president, oh. he he just could not. When he, of course, he was asked a question, and then and then when he he was asked another question, and I can't remember the exact question, but he cut the guy off. No, no, next question. He gets so angry. He can't control himself. The guy was the trying to is a loose gotcha cannon. question. Yeah. He was Come on. The every, every politician, this is what happens when you're a politician. Uh, what, what, you get, what, what, you're what, under a microscope. I, I want to, I want, uh, Phil, Phil, what do you exactly consider a gotcha question? Uh, I was listening to the questions that, uh, that he was asking, and uh, they, were, they were trying to uh, get him to admit uh, if there was, uh, I, I think they were trying to get him to admit if there was some sort of collusion with the Russians and, and so forth. And he said no. You know, uh, uh, actually, the way he said it, I thought was. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! He was Scott, rude. He was Scott rude. Scott yeah. seems to disagree with you, Scott. The question was about whether or not he asked uh, Comey to to uh, to uh, back off on the investigation of Flynn. That That's was right. the question. That's he right. said no. Oh. So that's good enough. It should be good enough. No is no. Oh yeah. If he says it, it must be true. It but he didn't. Ju- he didn't just say no. He he said, he said it. He said it in a very curt way. Rather than saying no, he said no. That's all. No. Next. Right. Because well, no, as far as he's concerned, he shouldn't have to defend no, himself. No. Apparently. Against apparently. He didn't do. Apparently. Herr Führer shouldn't have to. You know, you're the president. You should have more dignity than that. You should uh, have more. Yorker. You should yeah. be more in command. Do you are you feel comfortable with this guy having his ability to push the little red button with that kind of temper and um, that kind of flying off the handle? Yes. He's got a bad temper. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> think he'll fly off the handle. I think he's getting he's being pushed by the media and uh, they're relentless in his in their attacks. Uh, they they just want answers. The job of the press is to get answers, Phil. Uh, the Never job changed. of the press is to try a vis- to vitiate him. And that's what he's got you to believe. The term is a Every president has gone through this. 
Can it every be? Every president has gone like through this. No every way. president has no gone through no like this. May not have gone, they may not have gone through it before, but, you know, he threw out a lot of stuff to work off of. He lies. He tells from, different from stories. The, from the campaign on through, he was feeding everything out there and giving everybody ammo. Yeah, well, There's no two ways about it. You know, I guess you know that's uh, that's true. The, you know, the guy has uh, the guy has a big mouth, but that doesn't mean that he can't lead. Can he could just turn off his fucking phone change. and quit tweeting. That would help him a lot. Yeah, just spend t- spend time being president and quit tweeting. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you are you happy that he well, called it a witch up. hunt? Are you yeah. Happy? By the way, here here's a very interesting here's a very interesting comment that I saw online. I mean, it was a thing going around, and it's true. He said, I am the most uh, assailed uh, uh, politician. politician ever, yeah. right? Now that's the land. And, and I think he forgot about Nelson Mandela. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Did you see that up. meme? <laughs> yeah. They killed Kennedy. He studies with him. They assassinated Kennedy. No, Lincoln. no, but I mean that, that he's the most, I mean, he's only been in 100 days. We haven't had, we aren't through with him yet. Okay. <laughs> this is bad. Wait till later. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've, we've just begun. But when you are assailing the press because they're asking questions they want answers to, because they work as the ombudsman for you and I to ask those questions that we would like to ask him, when he somehow eviscerates that ability. Uh, he, he he attacks the press and he tries to minimize the press and that's exactly what Hitler did. Hitler did exactly the same thing to the press in Absolutely. Germany. You know, the the press is after him and he just no. gave them the press isn't no. after him. He put a target on oh, his boy. fucking back or, or a chip on his shoulder and said, "Knock it off." Yes, yeah. Patrick. Oh, okay. Help me. Let me say this. I one of the things that bothers me with him. Whether or not you believe he attacked the press or the press attacked him or whatever, the biggest problem I see with him, and, you know, I, I heard that now he's looking at eliminating the daily press briefings, which may not be a bad thing, and here's why. The guy contradicts his own fucking staff both before and after any issue, if if they go out and they say the president said X, Y, and Z, and then Sean Spicer or whoever it's going to be goes in the press and said the president is doing this, 35 minutes later, he's doing something else and says, oh, that's wrong. I didn't mean that. I didn't. He, his fucking staff cannot keep up with him. He doesn't know how to follow instructions. And, I mean, it's just a clusterfuck. So, to me, the less you have the press involved, the more likely you can keep him somewhat in line and give him direction, or at least minimize the amount of time during the day he wanders off the path. And the press briefings will be written. Yes. They'll give him a sheet of paper. These are the points. And no, 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 no. That's, that's bullshit. What, okay, that's wait a minute. Wait, Rob bullshit. had his hand up first, then Tony. That's Rob? complete bullshit. Are, do you really want this to happen? You really want to change the way we, uh, we, we, the way we deal with the president, the way the press, who is like just exactly what Alex said. They're our ombudsman. That's They're not here the way, for you and for uh, me. That's not the way we had dealt with the uh, press before. With the press before, you got a press conference. It was on uh, C- C-SPAN. Uh, Fourteen people watched it. There was six people in the room. Now it's on every bit you of mean news. You there were six people the in the room? Since when, it, cut, since when at a press conference have there been six people in the room? Uh, so there's 50. The room fit 50 people. Oh, well, now it's 50 instead of six. Get your yeah, facts straight. Times it was Get empty. your facts straight, Phil. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times it was empty. And, you know, and it's, and what no, it never was empty. Is. As long as I've been watching press conferences and, and hey, paying attention to them, there been a, it's been a packed house every time with any president. Oh, yeah. and, 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 but, but it, there wasn't any people there for the inauguration. 
Uh, so his press there the were there, there were less people at his inauguration than just about any inauguration in we history. We saw the pictures. We saw the pictures. Yeah, it was yeah, raining. There, there are more white spaces on that in the, on that picture of the uh, of the Capitol than you'll find at a Ku Klux Klan photo shot. Yes, uh, uh, Klansmen there uh, in yeah. attendance. Yeah, uh, Patrick. I was just gonna say, you know, watching the West Wing, the press conferences, and that fucking show's been over with for 15 years the press rooms were loaded and there were more than 6 or 50 people they were probably closer to 70 or 80 people and they had to pay extras the TV show <laughs> <laughs> they had to pay extras it's the right. way it is Phil people this is people want to know what the president is doing and what he's thinking and they want to question him on what his ideas are and and his and and they want to catch him in something. I think what you what you don't That's what you it. don't they remember, Phil. Phil what, what, any what, president. Phil, what you're trying to re, what you're trying to, re, to do what, it. What you're trying to recall is the fact that it wasn't until recently that every press conference is broadcast full length, right. uh, and that was not happening ten years ago. No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't happening four years. But ago. there wasn't the entertainment value in it that there is with Sean Spicer either. Yes, but now what's happening is the media wants these press conferences because their ratings are so high. They're getting so many people viewing it, and there's so many people talking about it. If Trump just comes out and says, here's your press conference, it, it's on these two sheets of paper, and it's these 15 but that points. Is not, that, that, is, that, that is not a press conference. That's that a statement. That is hiding, that is hiding basically hiding from the press. Yes, Patrick. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Tony had his hand up, then, to, then Patrick. Yes, Tony. You know, you know what it could be to with Trump? Whenever, if he seems like the type of person, I mean, I could be wrong, it's just an observation from watching him, is that everybody told him his whole life, because he's like you said, Alex, he's always been the boss, you're a great guy. You're right, boss. You're the, and when anybody gives him any negative things, and the, he, he, he can't take the criticism. And he well, just like he, uh, he, it goes further than that, Tony. It goes to the. It, it, it goes no. It goes he, he to the fact he doesn't realize that he has been hired for a job. It's the first time he's ever been employed as an employee, okay. and he doesn't know how to be an employee. It, 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 you know, and uh, I'm sorry, but he is an employee. He that is a job you go get. It's called a job, and you're not the you know you you're not the CEO of the United States. You're the president. Okay. Do you think he wants to f quit the job? Then I don't think he wants to be president. I don't. Th I didn't, didn't think he ever. I, I don't. I don't think he was trying hard to win. He was trying everything he could do to lose. Yes, Patrick. What? Patrick. He had his hand up. And then, then Rob. Yeah. The, uh, the thing is with Trump. Trump. Let you uh, just assume he's a good businessman. I don't want to hear any argument against it. Just leave it at that. Okay. What he's not good at is dealing with the public in this sense. If he was sharp, he could be like Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George H. W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, you can go back to Carter, Ford, Nixon, all of them, where they didn't always feed into what the media wanted. And Trump, like like it was just said, the media want these things. The media want to find things out. They want to get gotcha things. And he plays and, and, right and, into that. And because he plays into it, they want to go to him. They exactly. want to go to him. And it's yeah. his fault because he did not listen to his staff. And like I said earlier, you know, the press, uh, the press briefing go on. Spicer says this. Whatever you think of Spicer doesn't matter. But Let's assume he says something and it and it's accurate. This is what we're doing. This is the agenda for next week overseas. Two hours later, Trump is gonna he, he's gonna go against that. He, he, he'll he's gonna, somehow. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. fuck it up and say no, that's not what I'm doing. And you know, and he he's plays right he, he's a Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I mean. Uh, let me tell you something from a perspective that I have as, as, a, as a talk show host. Uh, I learned very early on that if you were doing a talk show and uh, people would phone up and try and goad you, and your job was to not react to it, to dis and pretty much disarm anybody who tried to do that 
by not playing into it. He never has learned this lesson where the press is concerned. That right. if you uh, look like you're starting to get some flop sweat, they're going to start trying to get more flop sweat out of you. Exactly. And, and all the presidents I named were very good at that. Even George W. Bush, all you people that think he was a moron, he never played into that shit. I mean, the, the dumb shit that he did ha do, it was dumb shit that he did. But you had all of these presidents prior to Trump who knew how to play their card. They were either savvy well, before no. or they were taught when they got in the office. Look. Also, let's be, see your yeah. sweat. let's be honest about it, Patrick. He's kind of turned into a crybaby, you know, about because. everything. Oh, I'm the most put-upon president ever. <laughs> Oh, woe is me, you know, the press hates me, and, uh, you know, everybody's being unfair to me, and wah, wah, wah. Hey, you're the fucking president. Man up. Man up. <laughs> if he would have said, if he would have tweeted this morning something about the special oh, prosecutor yeah. saying something positive about it, you know, finally, we're going to get something done. We're, we're The White House will cooperate in any way we can. Let's just get this over with so I can get on with my agenda. Boy, how would that have sounded? But that's not yeah, what he that's he not what he hunt. did. That's not what he, he did. He called it a witch hunt this yeah. morning. Yeah. yeah. He didn't write that statement that was released last night. His people did. He yeah. wrote witch hunt. He could be using his Twitter to to enhance himself rather than Absolutely. screw himself. He doesn't have a brain. Well, you know, so what do you think about the witch hunt? Hey, Alex. Yes, uh, Tim. What do you think about um, Trump getting uh, Lawrence O'Donnell fired? Lawrence O'Donnell was fired. Lawrence O'Donnell was fired. When was he fired? They're, they're, they're not going to renew his contract. Well, it's they're not, going a little bit further to the right, but if, uh, the, basically the word was sent over that if you want access to, to Trump, like Lester Holt's interview and stuff like that, because oh, I, 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 I don't believe you, Tim. I, I don't believe you know, the story. I'll, I, I'll no, I, I, I don't care. I don't. I, I, I don't care what you. There. I don't care what. You, don't matter. Matter posting it on Facebook because it's just he said, she said kind of situation. The fact is that if they want to get rid of Lawrence O'Donnell, well, I'm sorry. That's they wanted to get rid of Alex Bennett over at Sirius XM. Did, did, well, the, the you know? Is, and there were probably political reasons why I was gone, but I didn't sit right. there and and. Oh uh, no, I know, but I, I just think Trump. Trump was trying to ruin the media, but it was basically Lawrence would call Trump a liar almost every night. He was the first talk show person yeah. to call him a liar. Yeah, so big deals. He's a fucking yeah, talk show I host. Think be wrong. He's a fucking talk show host. I I always hate it when I like I listen to uh, the intersection after this show, and Amy's always lionizing Rachel Maddow, you know, and I'm going. That fucking Rachel Maddow, she's just another talk show host for crying out loud. Right? <laughs> Why lionize them? You know. Yeah. What, what were you going to say, Patrick? I said she's an idiot along with her twin, that Chris, whatever his name is. Chris Hayes, yeah. yeah they're both I wear $30,000 or $5,000 suits. Has, has anybody seen them two in the same room at the same time? Actually, they're the, they're the same person. They're the same person. You know, but I mean... Uh, I, I don't think maybe that's why they got rid of O'Donnell. It might be that if I went and looked at his ratings, they sucked. <laughs> no, they're the highest he's ever had. His well, ratings well, are high. Well, it, that still doesn't mean he's got high ratings. It's the highest well, he's ever he, had. He's got the second highest on MSNBC primetime. Uh, well, no, he's only it, there are only a couple of people there in the first place. And he's, well, at a, he's at a time he's in a time slot that still has a lot of viewers. Okay, uh, but uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 you want me to look up the ratings right now for you? I can, no, that's fine. I can no, I, find them. No, Didn't Rachel Maddow's ratings surpass uh, uh, a couple of other uh, Fox uh, uh, people? Yes, Fox is the Fox prime time has been suffering lately. Uh, both MSNBC and CNN beats them in prime time. Supposedly. Fox is still winning the entire day, but when you look at prime time, they're losing. Yeah, well, you know that's uh, you know a, a part and parcel of what went on with Megyn Kelly and uh, all the other scandals that uh, that happened. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't watch it anymore. Here's uh, the, here's uh, the ratings from last uh, night. From last night, um, Hannity. Uh, 
566, I think that, that's 1,000, okay? Huh? Lemon, 510,000. O'Donnell, yep. 619. So he was number one among all those people. Uh, uh, Maddow had 763. She was... Uh, she was ahead of it. Fox is not doing well at night. They're starting no. to, they're starting to uh, I, I think it fell apart because I think O'Reilly did get them numbers. And I, right. and, and I uh, wasn't uh, he Megan, like Megan Kelly, Kelly, I think, did get them numbers. Megan what? Kelly. Yeah. 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 She was highly rated. <laughs> the, spe the specialist today had Ted Nugent and some guy <laughs> from e ESPN on their own. Oh, yeah, Stephen A. Smith was there. I saw I'm going, he Holy did. shit. Well, I this is low. He's, he's a sports talk guy. So a Donald, oh, uh, 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 Donald. Oh, who is that guy? Holy shit, he's a sports guy. Steve, what the hell? Is he? Smith, yeah. But they should get rid of Chris Hayes because he's not doing as well as the rest of them. Uh, not good enough. And then you know what, what? Why they feel Greta Van Susteren is a great idea over at MSNBC Horrible. is beyond me. But Jeez. you know they they, they 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 they've decided they don't really want to define MSNBC as as left wing. They want to. You know, kind of go with the way CNN is going and being very successful with it, which is trying to be even-handed. And the more even-handed they try to get, the more Trump hates them. So they get a lot of publicity <laughs> off of that. But uh, whatever he hates, I like. You know, what they see in Wolf Blitzer after all these years, though, I still don't understand. <laughs> Piece of shit. Is that his real name, Wolf? You think or not? Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. it yeah. is. Look. Who named it? No, he changed it for show business. Oh, he did? Come on. No. <laughs> oh, I thought it was. Oh. I mean, if you were a news guy, do you think you'd take the name Wolf? Yeah. It sounds like a show, like a, like a stage name, Wolf Blitzer. Like, I'm, you know, I don't know. No, he, oh, was, a, he, yeah. was, a, he was a PR person for Israel uh, oh, before yeah. he got into news. Yeah. I always thought it was like a stage news name. Yeah. But, How uh, about the Israel trip by Trump? Oh, oh yeah. and he Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he's going to get a he's going to get a great welcome in Israel. Oh, okay. he, it's he, he wanted to cut it down from nine days to five days because it was going to be too much for him. Really? Are saying Air Force One? I don't one, think, I don't think the poor man can sleep at night. Imagine they don't let him in the country. <laughs> Could you funny. imagine the conversations that he has with his wife when they do talk? Like, she must say to him. Really? You you went and did this to yourself? Look at the fucking life you have now. <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy. You crazy. Remember yeah. remember when you had a good life here in New York, <laughs> living in a nice this. beautiful building with a with a hot wife and your nice good looking son right? and right? You know? And now look what Imagine he's doing. Son says daddy sucks. <laughs> Any of this pussy. Yeah, you ain't getting more of this pussy any longer, pal. I hate you, Donald. Look, every time I see a picture of her, she looks so unhappy. She just no, looks she looks happier now. Huh? She looks yeah, happier now that she's not around him. He doesn't she, come home. <laughs> well, no, but she doesn't have to get under him. But she's going to have to go to <laughs> Washington soon. Oh, come on. I don't uh, you think he fucks anymore? You really think so? <laughs> he looks terrible. Huh? I mean, and, and do you think a, 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 de a decent looking woman like that wants that big fat belly <laughs> rubbing his against, uh, uh, rubbing against her firm breast? I want to cut his hair off. It makes me nervous when I see it. Yeah, you know, I mean, come you hear on. that, Scott? No. You know. I said the only thing that Donald Trump is, or Rob, the only thing that Donald Trump is fucking now is the American people. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, he, he's getting stopped now. We won't let them pass them. Well, you know, I mean, uh, and, and what we hate here in New York is she is going to move to Washington, oh. but the, the cost of watching Trump Tower is not going to change because it, because it's a uh, it's a target. Yeah, it's a target. Oh, and, up. and so <laughs> it, it's still going to be costing us two hundred thousand dollars a day to protect Trump Tower here in New York City. Oh, I thought it was more than that. No, it's two hundred thousand a day. At least hey, hey safe, come on! That's oh, that's over a million a week. I think you know. Give me a break. That's a lot of money. But we're dealing know, with healthcare. fiat currency, though, with no gold standard to back it up. Yeah, but so. Uh, so. talk about security. How about that dictator from Turkey? What about him? His, his, his security patrol beat the crap out of protesters. Really? Like they do in Turkey. Well, they, Tur Turkey's got a new leadership, and this guy is a is a kind of a piece of work yeah he's a real piece of work and it's they, they didn't realize they were in the united states they're beating the crap out of people like they do in turkey you know they just put you in jail and put, the, put 
throw away the key, but they'll beat. I think eight or nine people went to hospital. Yeah, but you know what was interesting? For the longest time, Turkey was looked upon as a very positive country, you know, yeah. and it was not considered to, to be totalitarian or whatever. It was uh, really kind of kind of special, and then all of a sudden now right. you've got this this dicta basically dictator running the country. He suspended law, didn't he? There, he suspended. Uh, it's something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, remember when Bush got the shoe thrown at him? Was that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I read Trump signed an executive order to give the power. What were you What were you saying, Tim? Uh, Trump has signed an executive order to to give the police more power. They also want to make it easier to sue the the journalists too, so that yeah. baby steps takes it down the road to totalitarianism. This is not none of this is good, and um, I think you know what what it is is you got a guy who became president and thinks that because he's president he can do anything he wants to. Right, right, and and I'm sorry you just can't. There are limits. I mean that's the reason we have a, th a three tiered system where you have the Congress and you have the President and you have the, the uh, Supreme Court. And the he knew in that, early January about Flynn being under his investigation. He probably thought he could just stop the investigation after Inauguration Day. He probably, he I, Flynn, I think, I think he probably he was under investigation. Well, he kind of has the, the feeling that we all have if we became President, and that's why we will never become President, that you just wave your hand and it shall be so. And the fact right. is, it's well, not true. We have a series of protections in this country to protect the country from people who would wish to do it no good. And so you know, he can't do just when, anything. When you watch talk shows every night, and they bring on historians every night, because this is so unprecedented. They have historians on. Yeah, but, night. you know, I mean, I, I went back for a day or so to watching television news, and... I'm right back where I was, not wanting oh, no, to. No, I agree. Because it's just, you know, I watch the first five minutes of an hour, and they tell what's going on in the world, and so then I see the, the sound clips and the video clips and stuff. And then when they say, now to talk about it, I change the station, you know, because I don't like these pundits. They're just, you know, it's ridiculous. Yep. PBS is still pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. PBS They're is still good? Eh, I don't know. They put me to sleep. Okay. They put me to sleep. They they had the most boring news in America. Come on. Don't worry about it. Trump's going to shut him down. But there's no yeah. commercials. Oh, listen, no commercials on PBS? Fuck that. I was watching this thing the other night. Uh, Richard, no, there's lots of commercials. Uh, 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 King, King, King Charles III, which is uh, was a play about Charles becoming king. Okay. And I'm going, okay, we're going to settle down now because this is PBS and, you know, there are no commercials. And, you know, they usually you used to have things where they'd show, oh, I know, a cruise line, and they'd say, and this cruise line is proud to be a presenter of this program. And, they, and that was it. Donation. Now they run a complete one-minute commercial on PBS. That's the future of PBS. You go to PBS online... And they're running commercials like crazy before you can watch anything. Good reason to shut them down. In fact, I'm having to. In fact, I pay for my PBS uh, app every uh, every year about fifty bucks to the local station so I can get the app and use the app. So, you know, a PBS has been on its way out for years now, and uh, the problem with PBS is that for the most part, the 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 thing that they the, the job they used to serve is now being done by so many other people that, you know, who needs PBS? What? So I can get yeah. Sher so I can get Sherlock once in a great while? Oh, you get all those great oldies shows on the weekend. Oh, no. when I love it when they're trying to raise money and you know who their audience is because it's always these, oh, the biggest hits of the 50s, you know. Right. And, and all yeah. these doo-wop <laughs> groups come out who are now 80 years old and, <laughs> and, and to sing and you're going, Really? Really? And and also, in a lot of cases, it's the group like, here are the coasters, and not one of them right. was a coaster. Right. You know? Somebody bought the name and and did it. So... They were originally the doilies. Yeah. But, I mean, it was... T yeah. It was... T it, it's, you know, P PBS is pretty pathetic. Uh, and, and it... Mainly because it's had a hard time finding its reason for existence. I mean... 
How do you compete with Netflix, for instance? How do you compete, if you're PBS, with HBO or Showtime or anybody who wants to do a documentary or wants to do a, a series? Uh, you really can't come close. I mean, yeah, there are a couple of things they buy that come out of England and, and they run them a masterpiece theater. And I love Frontline. But, you know, Frontline could go anywhere. If they cancel Frontline, you could take Frontline anywhere. For, uh, but that's... That's a great show, and Matt, and uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, the American Experience, I, I love. You know, so they, they do have some good original programming that I do like, but I have to watch a two-minute commercial before every show yeah. now. Is that Bill Bradley that does that one? A whole two minutes. That's terrible. Well, come on. I don't want them at all. Listen, I pay Hulu an extra $3 a month so I don't have to have commercials. You know, because I, I, I get your money. Money. well, because I was so used to downloading torrents off the internet and watching shows without commercials in them, that now that I can pay to get no commercials in them, like on Hulu, uh, I'm willing to pay the extra couple of bucks to not have those have the commercials, and be able to watch the shows uninterrupted. What? Well, you give me a terrible look, Scott. Why are you giving? Why are you giving me those ten pound looks? What was that about? Do you you don't watch the uh, CBS Evening News, obviously, because it's like 15 minutes of news and 15 minutes of commercials. Well, also, so two all, minutes of commercials, I can live with. Yeah. 15 minutes, it's a little excessive. Well, it's not 15 minutes, but it's 10 minutes worth. That's for damn sure. And plus, I don't watch the CBS Evening News because uh, what's his name? Uh, the, uh, Scott Pelly. I like Scott, Scott Pelly. Don't say anything Scott, bad about him. Scott Pelly has too big Scott, a... He, Scott, he, 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 he's me. He he's had, Scott, I like him. Okay? He has, Shut up. Right now, old he, man. He Shut has, up. He has too big a forehead. He has too big a forehead. He's this huge up. forehead. Have you ever noticed? It's like he's like something out of a science fiction movie. Mr. Brainiac. Big forehead. Hey, <laughs> you know, you know uh, Scott's going to have to go to church tomorrow twice. Uh, he's been yelling. <laughs> Listen, he might have to go right now. Yeah, really. I'm in church right now. I'm in Iowa. I can't do it. Oh, you're in Iowa. What are you doing? Hey, you I, Catholics I, in Iowa. What? What, what no are you? Catholics in Iowa. What are you? What are you? What are you doing in Iowa? Oh, I gotta go to a graduation. Oh, I have to go to a graduation. Who's graduating? My cousin's graduate. Or my nephew's graduation thing. Yeah. So. Isn't it fun to be retired? Because now you just get to go to all these things that you really don't I want can do to. Whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Scott's got the right idea. Yeah, uh, and he's making puzzles and going to church. Yeah, I wish I were in Still, Texas with I'm him, doing the, helping him do the puzzles, and I'd even go to church. Hey, uh, well, find a synagogue somewhere. Hey, by the way, a synagogue burnt down here in New York City. They yeah, landmark. Oh, yeah. But you know something? I thought it was, I thought it was the one that was right down near where I lived, and it's a couple of streets further down because the one where I lived. It was no long. It's no longer a synagogue. It was desanctified. Um, is the oldest synagogue in America? Really? Yeah, yeah. And I thought it was that one, but it wasn't that one. So, well, uh, in Times Square today, somebody uh, drove up onto the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah killed yeah. Killed, yeah. killed a young girl, sixteen year old. He was a Trump backer, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was on PCP. Was he? Yeah, that's what they're years saying. old, previously arrested for uh, DUI, yeah. uh, and uh, and and he was uh, former Navy. Wow. Well, here's a little item that uh, that none of you were going to bring up tonight. Uh, amid gasps from the crowd, Jean Michel Basquiat. You know who he is, the artist, the American artist, no. uh, Jean Michel Basquiat. Uh, a painting he did. Uh, a, a, of a skull sold for ready, one hundred and ten point five million dollars at auction. Ouch! Somebody's got too much money. It's 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 marijuana money. They're trying to launder it. Yeah, I guess you know. <laughs> well, you know, if I had a if I had a couple a lot of billions of dollars, I might do something like that. You know, why not? Yeah. You got it. Use it. You know, Father's Day gifts to get more into art. Yeah, I want to get more yeah, into art. Imagine you get somebody a gift like that. Yeah, hundred and ten million dollars. I, I still think Van Goghs have gone for more. 
I think Van Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh is not this guy with a well, skull. Well, but Basquiat, though, is a very, very, quite famous here in America, Phil, uh, in spite of the fact that you never heard of him. Well, <laughs> hey, you know. And Scott Jerry never Lewis heard of him either. Jerry Lewis is famous. Nobody's paying $110 million for one of his drawings, you know. He doesn't draw it on me. No, I understand. No, no he, but, but this the, guy drew a skull. No, but but those red skeleton clowns, man, I would have paid anything for one those of those. Those are the ones. Oh, how about what? A life-size Trump statue. Yeah, well, why? <laughs> yeah. You know, you, one you, of those. I mean, how about how? Yeah. I want to buy one of those Thank bush bush things. paintings. They're just terrific. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, bush paintings are really good if you buy them and then you don't frame them, you just hang them up on a refrigerator door. <laughs> on a magnet? With a magnet? Because yeah. 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 Like, that's where they belong. Okay. Um, but um, uh, no, but uh, that's a lot of money to spend for, for art. But, you know. What, uh, uh, yes, Patrick. I just little thing I just noticed. I just turned on Fox News. Yeah. And the last couple of times before they go to commercial, yeah, they show a picture of Roger Ailes and the date of birth and death. Even though they fired his ass, they're they're. <laughs> They've been doing that. They've been doing that all day. I didn't. I didn't. I hadn't yeah. noticed it, and I, I yeah, think they, it's weird that they got rid of him, and yet they are. They're they're, they're doing little uh, five minute like, snippets at the end of each show too. It's. You know, they think disgusting. they might be in his will because he's got a ton of money. Well, I mean, uh, he, at least forty thousand is forty million. Uh, but no, he's got no, yeah, he's got big, big stash. Yeah, but that's I mean, why his wife pushed him over and he hit his head in the bathroom. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> she I, couldn't take it that, that he was happened? retired. <laughs> Boom. Well, well, he died at what he did best. Really he died at what he did best, being a fat fuck. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I I would have liked to have been there to uh, or see a video of him slipping on the floor and hitting his head because yeah, it, you'd have to see a dick. It had to be, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> his, wife's, his wife's probably yelling, was probably yelling at him, why don't you go sexually harass someone else? Yeah. Yeah, the wife never came out and said, you son of a bitch. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. it, 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 like, was somewhere was there a conversation <laughs> that went something like this? You bastard. <laughs> you fucking goddamn now. horny bastard. Uh, hey, listen, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, uh, there's a professional side of me that says that uh, uh, Roger Ailes managed to accomplish something in this country that very few people thought he could do. And that was, I mean, he established a news network that was dominant for years and years and years. And you have to give the guy credit for that. Forget about the all the, you know, getting blowjobs from the women he stockpiled at Fox. Uh, he got Nixon elected too. He got Nixon elected too. He was uh, he was Nixon's. He was in advisor. television. He he, he was, was the producer television. of the Mike Douglas show. If you remember the Mike Douglas yep. show, he also oh, produced yeah. he also produced the Rush Limbaugh TV show for. Yes, a while. he did. You're absolutely. I uh, correct. worked on that show briefly. Did you? Wow. Yes. What was Rush to, like to work with? Uh, I I didn't really work with him. You know, I was in the crew, and you didn't you didn't. Uh, really interface with him. Yeah, he, he came straight from his radio show, did the TV show, and yeah. you know, I don't really have any recollection of, of yeah. spending. I wasn't there that long, so. Well, he uh, Ailes was then over at MSNBC. I think before it was MSNBC, and he started a thing called Talk Television, and that failed, and then it became uh, became MSNBC, and then he went over to, to uh, uh, Fox. And started the Fox News Network, and that was a raging success. But the template for it was talk TV, the thing he had created over at NBC. So uh, anyway, I mean, he's he's dead, and uh, the next asshole will come along, I'm sure. Those kind of people are very easy to replace, especially when they are assholes. But anyway, hey, listen to that. There's the theme. Good night, everybody. God, we had a good time. Tony, thank you. Rob, always a pleasure. Kevin, think the world of you. Uh, Tim, very wise and perceptive. Phil, then there's Brian. <laughs> now, Phil, you, 
<laughs> he's got sound effects. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Brian, thank you. Patrick, good to see you up and about. And you look healthy as hell. Nobody would ever think you were sick. Okay. And uh, Scott, Iowa, huh? Bring back some corn. Anyway. No corn. It's uh, not even planted yet. Oh, okay. Anyway, I want to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you. Wave goodbye to everybody, folks. Yes, 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 yes. And there they go, ladies and gentlemen, the Citizens Panel. Uh, and it's uh, all through with now. Let me just uh, turn, turn a few things off here. This is what happens when you do a self-run uh, television show. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm here, and I'll be here again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. Next is the intersection with Jack and Amy. Followed very closely by Connections. I'll be here again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>